Hello, welcome to Sad and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Absolution by Jeff Vandermeer. This is a book coming out October 22nd, 2024. It is a sci-fi, it is a prequel to the Southern Reach trilogy. I received this book from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. Told in Vandermeer's typical cryptic style, Absolution is a prequel that sheds some light on Area X. You know, like, like how a lighthouse does. No, I'm kidding. Lighthouses are not lamps. What is this book about? For Jeff Vandermeer, there was never full closure to the story of Area X. There were a few mysteries that had gone unsolved. Some key points of view never aired. There were stories left to tell. There remains questions about who had been complicit in creating the conditions for Area X to take hold. The story of the first mission to the Forgotten Coast before Area X was called Area X had never been fully told. And what if someone had foreseen the world after acceptance? How crazy would they seem? Structured in three parts, each recounting a new expedition, there are some long-awaited answers here, to be sure, but also more questions and profound new surprises. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to tell it to you straight. I struggled with this one a little bit. Let me backtrack before that statement, though, by stating that I am generally a Vander fan. I love City of Saints and Mad Men. I love Annihilation, and I really enjoyed the other two in the Southern Reach trilogy. I thought Bourne was great. I really liked Dead Astronauts. I have, you know, all the sequels or tie-ins to City of Saints and Mad Men, Finch and Shriek uh, and Afterward. Um, what else? I've, I've read, uh, like, most of his stuff. I even just recently read Predator South China Sea. So when Absolution popped up on NetGalley, I was like, what? I, I'm not on Twitter or whatever Elon calls it now, so sometimes I miss book news. So I was really glad that this one kind of like showed up. <laughs> I was really, really stoked to be approved for it. But I struggled to stay engaged at times. In the last section, it, as the blurb says, there are three. I will admit, I really, really disliked. The best section, at least in my mind, was the middle, which is sort of a spy thriller with two characters who were likable and interesting and a timeline that was actually chronological, so you didn't have to like work too hard to understand what was happening. There was, you know, stuff that wasn't fully explained and stuff that I'm like, do I really understand what happened there? But, you know, it was still like enjoyable in that way and not kind of really understanding is kind of like the deal with Vanderbeer novels, so like you know that going in. The first section of the book is, I'm going to say cryptic again, because it, yeah, that's kind of like the signature of this. Um, and while there are some things I wished had more explanation, you know, I could follow what was going on. And there were some really interesting parts, some really cool ideas and concepts and like imagery that, you know, really drew you in. Yet, I also felt that part was a bit too short and a bit too fast. It was kind of like Annihilation Light for me. Had it been broadened out a bit or had it been told more as it happened, you know, with characters who had actual names and personalities and we could really watch react to things, not just like be told about it from a guy reading what happened, I, I mean, I probably would have loved it. <laughs> the third section is like Finnegan's Wake in the worst way possible and if every other word was fuck. For a lot of it, I had no idea what the hell was going on and while I think I get the gist of it, it... <laughs> It's not an answer to the questions posed in the Southern Reach books, so it honestly felt like I just slogged through a shitty side quest in a video game only to get a level 2 sword. <laughs> the main problem with this section is that the main character is incredibly unlikable and a huge jackass, and it was really hard to read with literally, it says fuck every two or three words. It, it's just like, and I'm not like a prude about language. I swear all the time. I try not to on my channel because, you know, what if kids accidentally watch it? That kind of thing. But I was just like, stop. <laughs> so this aspect really distracted me from the scenes with the lighthouse, which was something I was very much looking forward to as I love lighthouses and it was my favorite part of Annihilation. To be honest, while I did enjoy the novel minus the third section, I'm not sure we needed this book. You know, the Southern Reach trilogy made sense to me and ended in a way that was open-ended yet still kind of definitive. The prequel didn't really add anything to the story for me personally. Yet, yeah, if you are an Annihilation mega fan, this book is sort of a partner to the story rather than a direct prequel, so you probably really, really enjoy it. I think if you love Vandermeer's style, if you loved, you know, that trilogy, I'd definitely check this out. It has a lot of things going for it. I'm going to talk about all the really good things about the book because there are some great things about the book. You know, as I said, the section with old Jim and Cass was excellent. Their dynamic was interesting and I loved the mystery and the sleuthing around and how they had to put everything together. It could have started a little bit quicker for me though. I didn't really care about like the pissing contest between old Jim and Jack, but whatever. 
the first section was had some really creepy and fascinating moments that could only come from Vandermeer. You know, I'm not going to spoil them, but they're just like, they're wild. <laughs> there are also moments when he lets his prose shine, like, and this is an arc, so it might be changed or removed from the final. He climbed the stairs with a slowness that felt like delay, but veered more towards caution. Like, so interesting, you know, just to say someone goes up the stairs. He, he just gives it such depth. And there's some evocative descriptions of the landscape and the weird shit happening in Area X that you probably expected. And yes, you do definitely get that. And the book has layers of meaning that fold in on themselves. The entire time, just like reading Annihilation, you're piecing together things from other parts of the book to understand what is happening. It's like a puzzle that you don't know the completed image of. So when two things seem to correlate, you slide them together and hope to understand what they convey. And you hope that that ties into the bigger picture as well. This happens a great deal in this book and it's really rewarding when you come across it. So reading it just for that would be great. Unfortunately, I don't think I had any connections in the third part because I was too distracted by not liking it. But definitely the first two, there was so much of that happening. Overall, this book had a few things about it that didn't work for me, but I'm still a very hardcore Vander fan and I don't think anything will change that. And it, this book actually makes me want to go back and reread the Southern Reach, Reach trilogy. Will I do that? I don't know. Maybe in December I'll reread it, at least Annihilation. That would be fun because I haven't read it since it first came out. I think when I first read it, it was a long time ago. Like I think I know I was on vacation somewhere, but I'm like, which vacation was it? <laughs> anyway, if you have read this prequel, please let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Did you also find the third section annoying? Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you again to the publisher. I, I really appreciated the ERC.